Force Leadership School. This also a first kind of program in the Northeast for us. But I tell you this because I want you to know that if God can use me in sports ministry, He can use anybody. You don't have to be a professional athlete. And so now I tell people that I have the greatest job in the world because I get to use something I love, sport, recreation, and fitness, to tell people about the person I love the most, which is Jesus. You see that 80% of the total world population is engaged in sport. This is a great opportunity for us to engage ourselves. The sport itself has become, you know, it has become a, a dirty. We need to redeem sport itself. We need to redeem the culture of the sport and the people who are involved in it so that they, they live a better life. They live a transformed life and make a change in our societies. We have a great opportunity and that is the reason why we, all of us are here. You know, Lord, with your blessing, Lord. And as we are going to start our program, the 10 days training with this opening program, Lord Jesus, it is our prayer, Lord, that you will continue to lead us. You will continue to guide us, Lord. In the process of your stay here, you have to get to know each other. Don't just be around your own state. Just get to know each other, get to know their language. So, uh, I heard from Manipur, how many?
we have professionals with us. Be careful, okay? We have kickboxers also with us. Um, gold medalists, okay? We have a national gold medalist with us. Be careful, he can punch you anytime. Okay? We have also um, missionaries, we have church planters, we have um, evangelists, we have also the key leaders from uh, different associations, a mixture of all these groups. I'm just excited and, uh, and we look forward for having a great time together. So I know some of you have, have questions. When I called you, it was a difficult time for all of us in Wait. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're already tired because I met you several times. I called you, uh, you see, what can I get back? What can I expect? How can you help us back? That was the question most of you asked me. I say, keep quiet. <laughs> just come. Just humble yourself. Just come. Come before the Lord. Come before the cross and see what He has for each one of us. And I'm sure God is going to lead us to an amazing journey together for 10 days. I'm also going to extend you to a stadium where we will see where we, how we can do our disciple making in the stadium as setting. So it's going to be an exciting journey for all of us. Um, India, we have um, um, a team under this uh, name, Sports Coalition of India, where we, we, wanted, uh, we wanted to reach out to every single district. And by the time when we started with the 711, now it has, it has increased more and more districts and we are working hard to reach out to all these districts with sports ministry presence and we have covered about 500 plus and northeast we, we got 100, 116 districts and now it has added a, a few more so we have about 25, 125 and just 3, 4 are left to reach out. So that is the reason why you all got to hear something and you are here and we are just happy that God is leading all of us and we have amazing, we have an amazing potential opportunities before us. Northeast is a hub for sports and so, the, and so we are here and we want to train ourselves so that we, we grab this opportunity and transform our communities using sport as a tool and connect to people. Uh to your board, um, to all of you just for being here and trusting us with this opportunity. I knew this is, I know this is something new probably for many of you, but I am really excited to be here. I'm looking forward to these days together. I hope that uh, we will really invest in this time, not only uh, to come to know God better in our relationship with Him, our walk with Christ, but certainly to know one another and also, of course, to, to learn all that we can about sports ministry. So I want to encourage you to, to step outside of your own box and take the opportunity to meet other people. And also, I want you to come and approach me and uh, ask questions. Let's be engaged. We're a small enough group, I think, where we can really get to know one another and invest in each other's lives. And you know, what we're doing here is, is making history. Did you know that? You are a part of, of history, so you, are, you yourself are a history maker. So turn to the person next to you right now and just say, you are a history maker. <laughs> so let's make history together. Say that. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And yeah, um, I'm not the kick kickboxer either, so don't have to worry about me. Actually, I was not a professional athlete. Um, I grew up loving sports and playing sports and watching sports and reading about sports. But when I started in school, my parents started me a year younger than most of the kids in my class. And so physically, I was underdeveloped. Now, when it came to my classwork, in my education, I can keep up and I can even be ahead in some cases. But physically, I just could not compete with the people, with the, the kids in my class because I was skinny and not very fast and uh, not very quick. And so that was disappointing for me and hard, but I always wanted to play basketball. 
That was my love, that was my number one sport. So in the United States, whenever we want to play sports, if you want to play at the top level in your community, at that time you had to play for your school team. So you had to actually try out. And I grew up in a small town on the East Coast, and we didn't have a lot of recreational sports after elementary school, so probably sixth grade, seventh grade. But I decided I was going to try out for my basketball team. And in the seventh year, I tried out and I was cut from my team. I didn't make the team. That was disappointing. So the eighth grade year, I tried out again. Guess what? I was cut. Ninth, 10th, 11th, for five years in a row, I was cut from my basketball team. And you're laughing at me. You're sorry. Okay, no. It's okay now. But of course, it was hard. It was difficult because because as a as a you know as a teenager, you want to be cool, you want to have fun, you want to be with your friends, you want to play sports. But for five years in a row, I was cut from my team. Now my twelfth year, my senior year, I got the message, and so I thought, okay, God, you have something else for me. So I didn't try out that year. But I tell you this because I want you to know that if God can use me in sports ministry, He can use anybody. You don't have to be a professional athlete. And so now I tell people that I have the greatest job in the world because I get to use something I love, sport, recreation, and fitness, to tell people about the person I love the most, which is Jesus.
the world, okay? So, learn to appreciate each other. We appreciate someone's good hairstyle. Even if the, if the hair is not there, oh, you look great without, the, without your hair. Well, you know, there are some people like that, isn't it? Yeah. But instead of, instead of that, do some marabin. Marabin to your hair. Do go on. Marabin. How will you feel? Yeah, he's a member of your team, but you're uh, asking you all these unwanted questions. What do you think? Let it! As a leader, as an effective leader, we need to see everyone equal. We need to see everyone as equal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.